As we are in the new year of 2024, we have opportunities to begin, learn, or advance our cybersecurity careers. In today's video, I will be providing a guide with how to get started in cybersecurity from my perspective. Now, this video is broken up into two sections, technical content and generic career-based advice. This video is very similar to a previous issue I did last year at this time, echoing similar advice. There are a few changes specifically with leveraging AI LLMs. I know it sounds trendy, but there are some really cool use cases that you can do. So let's go ahead and get into the technical content with the eight steps that I recommend starting out with in cybersecurity. All right, so starting out technical step one is to read and consume content. So start reading the security news, uh, your fan favorite books or consuming or listening to content while you are commuting. Uh, reading the security news and books familiarizes oneself with the uh, general concepts and practices in security. Now, specifically with security news, you're learning about the most recent attack techniques and defenses applied in the industry. Story-based security books and podcasts provide deep dives into interesting stories in security news and exposes oneself to just the general security industry. You can learn a lot from consuming general cybersecurity resources. So when you don't understand a phrase or a concept mentioned within an article, for example, you can use Google or ChatGPT to summarize the content or the phrase, and then you can add that to your notes section. And after a while, what you'll find is you have a huge archive of notes of just various concepts, strategies, attacks, and defenses that you're learning. I recommend consuming about 15 minutes a day of the either security news, a book, or listening to podcast if time permits. So number two is learning the fundamentals of IT. The fundamentals of IT means learning the basics of computer hardware, software, operating systems, networking, and just general computers. Now, you need to learn the underlying concepts or the IT fundamentals in order to understand how things work together. Uh, so you can learn the fundamentals in a lot of different ways. I recommend using the CompTIA A+, Network+, and Security+, exam objectives that are provided for free in PDF format. What I recommend doing is going through each of those objective guidelines and just researching each concept one by one using, once again, Google or ChatGPT and formalizing with a archive of notes. Once you have a decent understanding of the fundamentals of IT, number three is to taking a deep dive into computer networking. So computer networking is the backbone uh, of our internet infrastructure that connects various devices and systems. It's what creates the internet. Learning various concepts such as networking hardware, the TCP IP and OSI model, network architecture such as segmentation, subnetting, network protocols, and network security are fundamental properties of IT security. So it's important that you take a deep dive into computer networking. Now, I recommend as a free resource looking at the CompTIA Network Plus exam objectives as a template for learning the basics. Once again, you could use Google, ChatGPT to look up these concepts. Step number four is to learn the basics of computer programming and scripting. Choose a popular user-friendly programming language such as Python. This is the one that I recommend, and you can transition into any other scripting or programming language such as PowerShell, Bash, or Go. Programming and more so scripting are used for general security analysts to do a lot of different processes, specifically with automation. So you can automate a certain process or workflow. You can build a command line tool which will automate a certain process and even creating security integrations via APIs is important. So scripting is a paramount skill to have within this industry. Now, learning the basics of scripting, maybe how to write a small scripts, read scripts, and generally just exposing oneself to programming languages is going to help you in this industry tremendously. So I recommend uh, for resources, looking at free crash courses on YouTube, given the programming language or scripting language that you choose, so Python, there's no need to go out and buy various Udemy courses. Uh, so I ch recommend checking out Ryan John's Crash Course, Fundamental of Python for Cybersecurity YouTube Crash Course. Technical step five is operating system basics. Learn the basics of navigating the Windows and Linux operating systems, specifically with navigating the command line, 
looking at or using common shell commands, the basics of OS architecture via kernel, user space, and system calls, learning how to set up virtual machines via Windows and Linux, and then also looking at file system, process, and memory management. Linux is a sizable component for the backend infrastructure powering the internet and overall servers. So learning the basics of Linux architecture and how it differs from a traditional Windows or Unix environment can be very helpful in you advancing your security career. Now, on the other hand, Microsoft Windows powers the large majority of business and user workstations and business internal networks. Understanding the common techniques and tactics attackers use to infiltrate within these networks, as well as the defenses that you have as a cyber defender. All right, so step six is finally moving into cybersecurity or security basics. So learn the basics of security hardware, strategies, common attack techniques, as well as defenses and overall cybersecurity tools. So if you followed all of the previous five steps, the sixth step will be much easier to move into. You can learn about the basics of security hardware and then expose oneself to software tools such as vulnerability scanners, SEMS, firewalls, IDS, IPS, and lots of other acronyms. So at this point, you're learning the basics of security tools and techniques used. Um, once again, I do recommend as a free resource looking at CompTIA's Security Plus exam objectives via the PDF guide, looking at those contents via Google or ChatGPT, and just building a notes section. You can also take a look into the MITRE ATT&CK framework as well as the DEFEND matrix. These are comprehensive guides for common techniques, tactics, and defenses that cyber defenders and attackers can use. And finally, for step seven is learning cloud and virtualization. So within the last decade, cloud technologies, cloud computing has become ubiquitous within our environment. Learning the basics of the three major cloud providers, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Product, GCP, are going to be greatly beneficial to your understanding of how the cloud and on-premises work together. So basically, what is the cloud? It powers virtualization via using someone else's computer. So you're just renting somebody else's hardware. Uh, virtualization it does a lot of different things, but ultimately, in a security perspective, virtualization is going to help with malware sandboxing, deploying honeypots, building temporary environments, and many other items. I recommend formalizing yourself with one cloud provider at a time. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. For reference, right now, I'm still uh, using AWS. That is the primary one that I have been focusing on for the last two years. Um, ultimately, the cloud products may be in different names, but the overall architecture of the cloud or the providers that are, you're using are going to be very similar. To gain exposure or learn one of the cloud providers, I recommend looking at their respective documentation or YouTube crash courses. Uh, there are entry-level certifications that each of the three provide, uh, specifically with Amazon Web Services. It's the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner, the Microsoft Certified Azure Fundamentals, or Google's Google Cloud Digital Leader, or the Google Cloud Associate Cloud Engineer. Uh, these are good entry-level certifications to take a look at the exam objectives and perhaps pursue to gain just a general exposure to the three providers. From a career perspective, there is a lot of generic advice that influencers and marketers are trying to give you. Uh, so overall, these are kind of my generic career-based steps. Number one is to develop a plan and stay consistent to that plan and also develop documentation. So as you begin your career in this industry, try to create some sort of learning plan and stay true to this plan. Whether that's learning an open source tool, pursuing a certification, or looking to get a university degree, I think that it's important that you create a plan uh, and stick to that. And then also make sure you have documentation space, whether you want to use Joplin, Obsidian, uh, Notion, or any other type of platform, I recommend taking extensive documentation so you can reference that for when you forget later on. Career recommendation two is project-based learning or approach. So whether that's CTFs, 
uh, cybersecurity, home labs, via virtualization, overall building a portfolio of projects. Not only is this going to help you with uh, you know, getting a hands-on perspective in getting started in cybersecurity, but also it's a portfolio of projects where you can talk about that to maybe some future recruiters or employers. For my third recommendation, uh, pursuing a formal qualification, maybe that's a university degree, a, a few cybersecurity certifications, these can be useful for your overall learning process as well as making you perhaps more suitable as a prospective candidate. A general technology, computer science, cybersecurity degree, or sticking to the main uh, cybersecurity certifications are probably going to be your best bet. Overall, I, it's, it's a portfolio that you're trying to build when you are applying to these jobs. Career-based step four, apply with AI. So with the arrival of new AI platforms this past year, uh, there's been a different approach to applying online depending on kind of how you look at it. Using AI platforms such as Lazy Apply or Simplify, um, you can have these systems or platforms go out for you and submit resumes on your behalf on online postings uh, such as Indeed or LinkedIn. This makes it easier to get your resume out to hundreds of companies without manually having to apply to them. And well, you're still competing against a massive crowd of applicants when you apply online, but it may help your chances with landing an introductory interview. And finally is staying consistent and building your network of community professionals. So stay consistent to the process. It's something I need to learn and continue to do with myself and uh, continue to build your network in whatever way that is. Discord servers, it can be anything online or in-person meetups, it doesn't really matter. The InfoSec community is truly a great community depending on what side of community you're in. Uh, and they can be very supportive for you. So make sure to stay involved in the community uh, and you never know what may happen when it comes to landing possible employment opportunities. So as we begin 2024, the new year, I hope that this video can be a consolidated resource for you to help at least start or continue to grow in your cybersecurity career. I'm still learning myself. I have a lot to learn. Um, and these are just some of the items that I have learned along the way so far. So uh, all resources will be in a link in the description below. Happy new year. And well, until the next video, have a good day.